Continuing with uh, uh, factors involved in access control systems, and, and now uh, more into terms of implementation itself, uh, we get to centralized access control and a situation where um, in our modern mm, distributed systems, uh, client server systems, uh, uh, anyways, multi uh, unit uh, systems and we want to instead of having to sign on to each individual resource um, centralize the the access control uh, the the management of authorization uh, now again you know Kerberos uh, does this uh, different uh, systems based upon uh, public key infrastructure uh, do do this but um, some of the specific systems that you uh, may encounter particularly in regard to legacy systems and uh, we have radius which actually uh, is the remote authentication dial-in user system um, so radius is a an acronym and and here we have a a centralized server uh, we have um, everybody when they are uh, dialing into the system uh, using remote access getting into the system getting access to the resources on the system and the authentication is all handled separately centrally with a radius uh, server the the radius is a, a, a protocol uh, can be implemented by different vendors um, and you know our authentication is is done centrally our, our certification of the user is is done centrally the authentication uh, information and data is held centrally and wherever you come into the system however you come into the system uh, the radius server is is going to authenticate you and having authenticated you is going to make the determinations of what you're authorized to use uh, then there is diameter and diameter no is not an acronym uh, it's just uh, a slight improvement and so people said it was twice as good as radius ha 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 okay um, same same basic concepts that we've got here um, so we have a distributed access control um, we have uh, systems like federated identity management uh, we have uh, oh systems uh, that uh, are primarily Unix based that can rely on various offshoots of the uh, network file system and uh, there are specific access control uh, systems built on on top of that on a centralized basis um, there are additional uh, access control systems that are are based on um, uh, directory servers uh, so we have things like LDAP that identify uh, different uh, network entities and and resources um, based primarily just simply as a, a directory service to identify for the users you know what it is that uh, a, a resource is, is called on this particular system um, but we can because of the uh, central database structure that is available to that use it to hold authentication uh, data and of course if we're going to do that we have to ensure that we do make uh, special efforts to protect the 
uh, the data that we are using there that that uh, is after all going to allow access to our systems and and so we want to have additional uh, uh, information there um, and and additional uh, 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 protection to protect that information so um, yeah and uh, basically a, a variety of of means that we can use and and we could as I say you know sort of lump in uh, Kerberos and and uh, some of the PKI based uh, systems um, in with that group but just wanted to uh, be complete in terms of the various uh, types of centralized access control and things that you may encounter uh, as we go into that.